As rock makers, the chemical sediments are just as important as the clastics. Like the clastics, they are named by particle size, but because calcium carbonate is by far the most abundant of the mineral precipitates, clay-sized carbonate particles are called calcilutite. Lutite is from the Latin ludum, mud. And in the same way, the classifications calcisiltite, calcarinite, and calcirudite are used to name accumulations of silt, sand, and conglomerate-sized particles that form rock. Plastic rocks are water-transported fragments of pre-existing rocks, whereas rocks formed by chemical sediments, precipitates, are born more or less in situ, although limestone clasts of varied origin may be present either as intraformational or imported fragments, and the shells of organisms may be indigenous or allochthonous. In marginal areas, clastic sand or silt can be a constituent. This chart offers basic criteria for and an elementary classification of precipitates based on their chemistry and mode of origin. In blue, carbonate rocks formed directly by precipitation from water are classed as chemical. These are discriminated further by the form of their precipitates as either oolites or interclass, or by a change in their composition, added magnesium, which produces dolostone. A rock is biochemical when it consists of particles that were extracted from water by animals and plants that secreted calcium carbonate or silica as part or all of their skeletons that then accumulate to form the major component of a rock. When a rock consists of the remains of vast numbers of one kind of small fossil, it may have a common name, like chalk. Because of finds of algal remains in them, micrites, indurated calcilutite, are included in this biochemical category. But some micrites may be only compacted carbonate clays. Pellets are presumed to be the excreta of small lime mud digesting organisms and in large numbers make up pellital or nowadays pelloid limestones. For these small rounded fragments cannot be securely identified as fecal. In pink are the extensive deposits of three minerals, salt, mainly sodium chloride, halite, chert, in part a redeposition of the silica of diatoms or radiolaria, and gypsum, hydrous calcium sulfate. Dewater gypsum and hydrite, although a common rock, is not mentioned and the travertine and tufa of hot springs, caves, and lakes are not listed either. But the rocks omitted are but variants in the form and disposition of their crystals of calcium carbonate. In brown is coal, considered as having a biochemical origin. Current, more discriminatory classifications yield better and more precise information regarding the environment of deposition, porosity, and post-depositional alterations of carbonate rocks. Two systems are in current use, both now slightly modified from the original presentation of the author. These slides present the framework of the folk proposal, which is based on the energy of the environment as determined from the existence of an autochthonous matrix, lime mud, or the presence of secondary cement, spar calcite, 
These orthochems, together with the number and kind of carbonate grains, allochems, that may be either allochinous or autochthonous, comprise the basis for the rock name. There are four kinds of allochems, intraclasts, ovoids, pellets, now pelloids, and bioclasts, contemporary shelled organisms. The rock name is derived from the relative percentages of these allochems to either or both of the orthochems. As shown on these charts, the four kinds of allochems are supplemented by three other classes of carbonate rocks, mainly lime mud alone, or constructions of organisms that cemented together comprise the rock, a biolithite. Provision for both dolomitization and clastic content are included in the nomenclatural scheme. The folk classification has five major classes identified by Roman numeral. Its proper use necessitates thin sections. The Dunham classification takes a more direct textural approach. The basic criterion is the packing of framework grains. If the matrix supports and separates the grains, two classes are distinguished based on the relative percentage of matrix and grain, mudstone and wacky stone. If little matrix is present, but the grains support each other, the rock is a pack stone. And without matrix, it is a grain stone, which is termed root stone if the grains are more than two millimeters in diameter. Similarly, if the grains of a wacky stone are more than two millimeters in diameter, the rock is a float stone. Bound stone is used to name original components organically bound during deposition. This category has been differentiated by Embry and Cloven into baffle stone, organisms acting as baffles, bind stone, organisms encrusting and binding, and frame stone, organisms building a rigid framework. A comparison of the folk and Dunham nomenclatures shows their degree of congruity. In the field, the Dunham classification is easier to use than the folk. To conclude this discussion of chemical sediments, first, a non-technical summation of limestone textures taken from my talk on their potential as reservoirs for oil. The rock names follow neither folk nor Dunham, but do use some of the vocabulary. Many of the following slides are named using both of these classifications, others only one. Nearly all the slides are thin sections enlarged, but there are potash sections too and one photo of an outcrop. In general, the sequence of the display is from low to higher energy environments. Note that most ooids and other coarser grained rocks are cemented with spar calcite. An absence of mud size or micrite matrix and coarse texture is an indication of reasonably high energy. Oncoids are an exception. They are relatively large, up to 10 centimeters in diameter, Concentric, wavy-layered ovoids of limestone formed in quiet, shallow marine and associated freshwater environments by blue-green algae, cyanobacteria, usually around a pre-existing nucleus of shell or rock fragment. All porous chemical rocks are subject to replacement by the minerals and fluids rich in silica, calcium carbonate, dolomite, gypsum, salt, or iron. The replacements often leave ghosts of the particles of the original rock, so its primary texture is discernible. Dolomitization of mudstone or micrite is common. 
complete replacement by other minerals, less so. A slideshow about igneous rocks is coming in a month or two. Look for it.